recording the session. So again, thank you and welcome to this webinar tonight from Burnout to Brilliance, Building Resilience and Success Habits to Be the Best Version of You. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about tonight is this. You're going to be discovering tonight how you can accelerate and have a breakthrough in your life as well as your self-confidence. Three of the top things that I teach and I find passion in tonight are, number one, I love to teach people and leaders how to have a breakthrough, whether it's in their personal life or their business life. My background is sales. I'll talk a little bit more about my background later, but I've really been studying self-development now for, this is crazy, over 30 years. I went to my first self-development workshop when I was a student at the University of Kansas, and this has always kind of just been a hobby in my life. And the past four years, I've really just jumped into this as not just a hobby anymore, but something that I really do to serve other people at another level. The other things that I'm really passionate about are number one, I'm passionate about people building their personal power. I'm also passionate about people helping them grow, whether it's the revenue or the money in their bank account for individuals, companies getting more profits in their bottom line. And also, I just call it human potential, so personal and professional growth. But the other thing that I'd like to talk about is I have a passion for creating breakthroughs. And when I talk about a breakthrough, if I quote what Tony Robbins says, a breakthrough is a moment in time when everything changes. And that can be when we make a decision to say no more. That can be a decision when we say, let's get started. It can be a decision when we say, I'm going to start something different that I've never done before. All of those are what I call breakthroughs. And so what I tell people I do is I create breakthroughs in which people, teams, and leaders can accelerate their sales confidence and also have more success in selling themselves, their products, and their services with confidence without sacrificing work-life balance. But the big piece of that is woo, winning others over and building influence. And that doesn't apply to just sales professionals. I think that applies to every one of us in this world, no matter what type of work we're doing. So that's something that I also really thrive and love to talk about and share with other people. So what I'd like to talk about next is, have you ever wondered what it would be like if you were able to master success without working harder? And I chose this picture of this monk because to me, it's all about these laws of attraction and manifestation that we might have heard about. Napoleon Hill was one of the first creators of those, those laws and wrote about it. Bob Proctor, later, the late Bob Proctor, really made this whole um, focus of creating and manifesting what we want in our life by our thought habits, something that really became a huge business. And then we have other people in the world like Tony Robbins, um, anyone that doesn't know who he is, very big motivational speaker. But really, the big thing that we want to talk about here is, is that it's not as difficult as you think it might be. And I think that's one of the biggest myths that I'm going to dispel tonight is that it's not hard work. It's not about doing more. It's actually about doing less and being in the now that we're going to be talking about. So would you like me to share with you a simple six-step process as to how you can be the best version of yourself? How can you align your thought habits and create extraordinary results in yourself, your results, as well as your confidence? And also, would you like me to share a proven science that when combined with logic can create huge shifts and changes for the better? So what you are about to discover is this. What it is really going to be about is it's going to be about, as I said earlier, not about doing more, but it's going to be about making something that I call two millimeter shifts. If anybody's read the book by James Clear called Atomic Habits, that is a really great book to read because what he talks about in this book is that if you make it a habit to make two millimeter steps each day in your life over time, that can result in really big changes and big breakthroughs. But what I'm going to share with you is also a formula and a way that not just individuals have transformed their lives, but also businesses. 
This formula that I'm going to be talking about tonight has been used by companies like Coca-Cola, Microsoft, and also other medical companies that I've worked with called Tides Medical, and just to name some of the other businesses that I have seen master this whole idea of thought habits that we're going to be talking about. So next, what really is my promise to you tonight? My promise to you tonight is that by the end of this presentation, you will have the keys to understand the six steps that I'm talking about. You'll also have some tools to influence others, to sell yourself with woo, winning others over without sacrificing your work-life balance. Now, just a layout of tonight, I'm going to share this with you. I'm also going to share my backstory because I'm sure you're probably wondering, I think everyone knows me, but you might be wondering, how did I really get into this work? But I'll share how what I thought was a big breakdown time in my life ended up being a huge breakthrough. And then a little bit later tonight, I'm going to offer all of you an opportunity. And then at the end of the night, I'm also going to give everybody a bonus and a gift for being here. But the first thing that we really want to talk about before we really get into the content is what are thought habits? So what thought habits are is they're really patterns of thinking that support our success or sabotage our success. So one way we might think about this is when we are about to take a big step or we're about to take a big risk. Have you ever had that little voice in your mind say, oh, don't do it. What if it doesn't work? What is everybody going to think about you? What I'm talking about when I say that those are actually thought habits that we have. And I'm going to talk a little bit tonight about how these can support as well as sabotage our success. But the first thing we've got to understand is how exactly does this happen? So the first thing, as I just mentioned, is we all have thought habits. They support our success. So there I am today, or they can sabotage our success. So when I say support our success, I'm just going to take a sip of my water real quick. When they support our success, this is how we achieve. <clears throat> this is how we win. And some examples of that that I'll talk about, and I might use some people in the room as an example. So for instance, when Alexander first got on the call tonight, she was talking about how she has been able to really up-level her sales game. She also became a habit coach. She has also stepped up to be a great, she's always been an awesome mom, but she's also taught, she hasn't seen this yet, but she's talked to me a lot about how she's shown up as a leader, as a leader in the company she's working at. So with that being said, some of the thought habits that Alexander has that support her success definitely are in the areas of confidence, connecting with people, doing the work she loves and, and loving the work she does at the same time. But then like all of us, we might have some challenges which pull us backwards. And one of the best analogies I will share, and I'm not pointing my finger at Alexandra, I'll just say this for everybody in the world because we all do this. We get on the airplane and the first thing they tell us when they go through the safety briefing is they say, put your oxygen mask on first before you put the oxygen mask on somebody else. I think one of the biggest habits I see us do that pulls us backwards is we put the oxygen mask on everybody in our life and then the people that we work with, and then we put it on ourselves last. So really what happens here is we get out of balance. The best way we can see that we get out of balance is if you feel burned out. If you feel like you wake up in the morning and you're tired or you're worn out or you're having negative thoughts before you put your feet on the floor, that could be a signal that you have thought habits that are sabotaging your success. And it's normal. It happens to all of us. But in a few minutes, I'm going to share my story about how I faced that day after day and how I ended up changing it. Okay, so the next thing that I like to cover is this is that our, our thought habits don't just affect us in this room, but globally, it's a really big deal. So I'll share some statistics with all of you because even outside of our room, it can be a, you know, I hate to say the word pandemic, but thought habits can be a really big global challenge. And some of the evidence and research that I read lately, it says that 80% of us stay in jobs that we don't enjoy for the healthcare benefits and for the insurance. It also says most recently from Gartner, and I shared this yesterday when I was visiting with Cheryl's group, is that 
if any of you are in a role where you're selling or you're working with people, it's been reported that post pandemic, 44% of us are burned out. We feel like there's three reasons we're like that. The first is we feel like a cog in a wheel. The second is we feel like our boss or supervisor, whoever it is above us, doesn't understand us. The third one really dovetails into what we're going to talk about. People are feeling like they have no growth. They feel as though they're stuck. And the best way the research shows that you can get unstuck is through investing in yourself, your personal development, as well as your personal professional development. And what I found in all of the years that I worked in sales at some really big Fortune 500 companies, I won't mention their names because I'm not trying to knock them on this call tonight. But one thing I noticed they never really talked a whole lot about was this inner game, this part of us that develops mental toughness, determination, courage, treating each other nice in the workplace, having a positive culture and a positive attitude. It's usually about the products, the process, you know, what the, the hierarchy is of the company we're working for. But it's just really crazy because if you think about it, it's just like, why don't they teach a lot of things in kindergarten, right? Finances. Um, there's a lot of things that we just unfortunately don't get taught in traditional education. So that's the reason that I really have such a big passion about what I'm talking about tonight, because I do think it's something that's missing. So the next thing I'd like to talk about, um, I always like to ask, how many of you like Matthew McConaughey? <laughs> Everybody likes Matthew McConaughey. So when we talk about thought habits, sometimes they can also be a big part of our success. And there was an article published in Success Magazine, and this was way back when Matthew was in college. And he tells a story about how he really wanted to be an actor, but he could not figure out how to get started. And he said one day he just stopped at his buddy's apartment. He saw this book called The Greatest Salesman in the World sitting next to his buddy, you know, on a coffee table. And he said, I picked it up. I just started reading it. And he said, to this day, I still carry that book with me. So I have my copy of The Greatest Salesman in the World right here. But what makes the book special that he's talking about? It's a really great fable but what's really the, I'd say, meat and potatoes is the back part of the book where he talks about the 10 scrolls. The 10 scrolls are really all about building good habits and also replacing bad habits with good habits. Some of the habits he talks about that we need to learn are embrace failure, be patient, go for principles, form good habits. Most importantly, read these scrolls every day. OK, and I do each day I read a scroll every morning and everybody in my group, including Alexander and Michelle, I know they also read a scroll each day. As a matter of fact, the scroll we're reading this month is called I Will Act Now. So it's all about acting in the moment and not procrastinating, putting things off. So it builds productivity. But what happens is we continue to read these scrolls and then they sink into our subconscious mind. And then we start seeing changes happen. So the reason that I want to bring this up is that the 10 scrolls, when we combine this with science, it can really create big breakthroughs that I'll talk about in a minute. But I really wanted to take a moment and make sure everybody can see what I really mean by these scrolls. And as I mentioned, I would call these really the 10 success habits. I would call these um, a 10-step program. I would call these keys to motivation. But as I said, this is not just for salespeople. Even though the book is called The Greatest Salesman in the World, it really doesn't matter what your role is in this world because these are all really great examples of how you can be the best version of yourself. So again, you can go to Amazon and get that book. It's $9.95. But I always recommend that to everybody that I meet and talk to about thought habits. And so the next part of this that I'd like to talk about is that the opportunity is now. One of my questions I always ask people is, there's no better time than right now. Where will I be one year from now if nothing changes? And the other question I always like to ask people is, if not now, when? Mental health has become a big crisis post-pandemic. How many of you heard the statistics? Divorce has increased, drug addiction has increased, alcoholism has increased, and much of that is because I believe people got put in a place where when you're 
on your own, sometimes we start thinking about thinking, and that unfortunately does not usually end up thinking happy and positive thoughts. So if you think about it, those of us that stayed in our home and didn't really get out a whole lot, we were thinking about thinking about thinking for over three years. So that is a really big challenge that now on the other side of the pandemic, we are all facing in our personal lives, our workplace, maybe relationships with friends and family might have also changed post pandemic. But the reason I bring this up is there's really no better time than right now to think about thought habits. So the next thing I'll talk about for a minute, and again, everybody knows me, but in case you wanna know a little more about me and why I'm so passionate about this, I'll just share a little bit about my background. I've written two books, From Zero to Sales Hero and From Zero to Speaker Hero. I've been an international sales trainer for the past 10 years. I am also involved with National Speakers Association, which is um, NSA St. Louis. I recently received an award called the Certified Speaking Professional for speaking over 300 hours and documenting it. The other thing that I also will say is I'm a distinguished Toastmaster. So the big takeaway for this though, for me that I really wanna summarize is that I have spent over two decades in medical and business sales, over 10 years in training and sales development. And I've studied, as I said, human potential for over 30 years. And it looks like Polly joined us. Hi, Polly. Thank you for joining us tonight. I see you just joined the webinar. But that's not really my story, okay? Because my story that I just shared is, is like the pretty highlights of what I do. But one thing I did not share with you all so, for, so far is that I really had my face-to-face -face with thought habits back in 2017. And I remember it just like it was yesterday. And that's what I'd like to share now. So. Um, away from all the accolades and the awards and the achievements, what I'm going to talk about really in this moment is something that hit me really hard at the end of 2018. Now, at the end of 2018, I remember getting a card in the mail and I opened it up. I was standing in my kitchen and I was living in the Chicago area. And as I opened up this card, it said, Life is happening for you, not to you. And I read that a second time. Life is happening for you, not to you. And it was almost as though everything had come full circle because I looked around my kitchen in that December of 2018. And instead of seeing Christmas trees and presents and all the things you see at the holidays, I was looking at moving boxes. And that moment, as I looked at that card and I sat on the kitchen table, I thought back to where I was almost 12 months ago. And it took me back to a night, January of 2018, where I had my first aha about thought habits and about how my life results were a result of the habits and the life I was living. So it was a very cold Friday night. I was invited to some women's house to talk about, they said, women in leadership. And I thought, okay, you know, I'm interested. Why not? I will go. And I remember driving, it was about 45 minutes away from my house. And it was as cold as cold can get in Chicago winter time. It was very windy. It was very dry outside. It had snowed earlier in the day. But the colder thing that was going on was what was happening in my mind. I was replaying the week conversations, conflicts things that really felt me helped me feel burned out at the place I was working at the time. I started really thinking about my whole life during that ride. I remember thinking to myself, I live in a nice house. I live in a brand new home out in the Northwestern suburbs. I'm married. I've got a great job. I was a global director for Qualcomm at that time in my life. I had sales awards hanging on my wall. I had the, you know, all the, the trophies and all the things that can make anybody happy. But something was missing. And I really could not figure out what it was. But I got to the house that night. And it's funny because these two ladies saw Mary Kay and they promised me, you know, the night was not going to be about Mary Kay facials. But as I walked in the door, I looked around the room and I noticed there were probably 20 other women. And I could feel. I could feel the energy from them that they were missing it, that that it I was talking about, they also felt the same way. 
But then all of a sudden, these two women stood up, Amy and Jeannie stood up and they started talking. And as they started talking, I noticed they had something, they had it. They had confidence. They seemed happy. They were excited about what they were talking about. They were so well put together that at the end of the night, they gave me an opportunity to sign up for this course about thought habits. And I didn't go through that typical, I don't have the time or I don't have the money or let me think about it. I just felt my arm grab my wallet out of my purse and I pulled out my credit card and I handed it to them and they gave me the stack of books and a curriculum and I didn't think much of it, but I will fast forward and tell all of you what happened in my life over the next 12 months besides Tony Robbins and joining Toastmasters, it literally changed my life. But some of the highlights I'll share with all of you as I go through this webinar tonight are this. The biggest thing that I noticed was missing in my life was a sense of fulfillment. I didn't have a problem. I wasn't having a midlife crisis. I wasn't in the middle of a breakdown. But what had happened is that the result of my life was all about the decisions and the choices driven by my thought habits. That was the reason I was not happy. So I'll fast forward and share with all of you what happened during that year is, number one, I made a decision to leave the marriage I was in. I stopped lying to myself and just being honest that, you know what, I'm not happy. This person's not happy. It's, it's time to move on. The second thing I decided is I'm moving back to St. Louis. And I love Chicago. And I miss my friends up there, Michelle, Jane. You know, we spent a lot of great time up there. But I really wanted to get closer to my family down here. You know, especially we all know time is limited. And then the biggest thing that happened, I remember, is I had my best year ever in my career. And then furthermore, I made the decision at the end of that year, after breaking through of all of that, that I wanted to be a coach to teach these principles to other people, which really brings me right to where I am right now. But the story doesn't end there. Now, in the middle of that summer, you know, right as I was moving back to St. Louis, actually, I'd already moved back to St. Louis. And that card I got in the mail was an invitation to see Tony Robbins, you know, big motivational speaker. And I thought this is the best time to go back, see him, you know, it's all about making changes and transformation. And I was excited. I was going to go to Los Angeles. I thought, you know, this is my time, you know, but I'd already gone through of the big five life stressors. I had already gotten divorced. I had already moved and I was getting ready to get hit with a third big life stressor. As I was walking into the Tony Robbins seminar, you know, the music was loud. It was at the Los Angeles Convention Center that, you know, people are high-fiving each other. There's a lot of energy. I mean, everybody's excited. And then I just looked at my phone before I went into the workshop. And then I noticed there was this email from the vice president of sales, which was also copied human resources. My stomach sank because we had just bought, been bought by another company and there were rumors that people were going to get let go on the leadership team. And I knew it as clear as day what that email was about. They were setting up a conference call with me and I thought, you know what? I'm going to just take this on right now. So I called him and I said, hey, I got this email. Lo and behold, I got laid off from my job. Now, in that moment, I remember I was just about to go into that pity party and victim mode and say, why me? What else is going to go wrong now after everything I've already been through? But you know what I did, which part of I learned through the thought habits course is I shifted my thought habit and my thinking in that moment. And I said to myself, you know what? I don't know what's happening right now. I don't know why this is happening and it doesn't make any sense, but there's got to be some reason that this is happening. And one of the things we teach in this course is that our life experiences can be our greatest gifts. And as it turns out, the next day they called me and they said, okay, yeah, we're going to give you a package. And you know what that gift was? I was kind of sick of my job and I was sick of working with the people I was working with. And so them letting me go gave me the way to get started in my coaching, as which is exactly what I did. I dove head first into being a habit finder coach. But the big lesson here is that sometimes what appears to be a breakdown can be a breakthrough in disguise. And the big test of that too, I think is COVID, right? Um, when again, when I was with Cheryl's group yesterday, 
I asked how many of you have had something really great happen as a result of COVID? You know, and if you have, if you want to put it in the chat or if you want to say it out loud right now, but I think all of us can think of at least one good thing that happened or that we changed as a result of COVID. Okay, so let's see if anyone put anything in the chat. Does anybody want to share anything that you think got better as a result of what you thought was a breakdown? Was it COVID? Was it something else? Going once, going twice. Okay. Well, what I'll share is that the biggest takeaway that what I would have am reviewing there is that it's not always going to be about the breakdown. It's really about how we handle it that makes all the difference, as they say. And so the next thing that I'm going to share with all of you is this, is that the foundation of what we talk about is that thoughts plus habits equal influence. The big things that I invested in in my life and self-development are really the way that I got from where I was to where I wanted to go. But the biggest thing that I remember from that era of my life is this, is that me having gone through what I went through before the pandemic, I think made the pandemic a little bit easier for me because I already knew that everything happened for a reason from what I've been through. But the other thing is I decided, as I said already, I need to teach this to other people because during the pandemic, it was a very difficult time for so many of us. We lost life as we knew it. And so what I was able to do was I was able to help other people go forward. So I started these coaching groups and some of the people on this call tonight Alexandra and Jane and Polly, for instance, they all went through this course when I used to do it over 14 weeks. We did one hour every week online, but now we do that in a weekend retreat immersion experience. But that whole pandemic got me to start that. So the other thing that I want to talk about now is what are the biggest challenges we're all facing? Let's just get down to the bottom line on this. So the first thing that people say is number one, that they're investing in programs that turn into shelf help, okay? Have you ever gone to a seminar, a workshop, or gotten some book or program and it ended up on your shelf? I think that's one of the things that um, sadly it happens a lot more than we want to admit. The second thing that we face is we work harder, but we don't work smarter. And I think that's one of the reasons we get burned out is we think if I just do more, if I just put in more hours, if I just do a few more things, it's just going to make all the difference. But the problem is, is it only makes us more tired most of the time. And then the other mistake we often make is we sacrifice our life balance to make a living. And we think that the best way to make a difference is the, in the world is to be a workaholic. And I know that, and I'll admit it, I still love to work. I still feel like that's an area where I'm a, you know, people, I'm a go-getter, I admit it. But I think what changed for me is once I realized that this is also a habit of thinking that can help us disconnect from reality, I started taking a different look at this and I started to be more aware of my life balance in general. But the big takeaway is we get burned out and we feel like a hamster or a man or the stick figure um, that's right here on this hamster wheel. But the bigger reason that we face these problems is this. We forget we have choices. We look at making changes like climbing a mountain versus making two millimeter steps at a time. We make things a lot bigger than they appear to be when we want to make changes. So one of the things that I thought is my personal mission and my bigger reason was to find out what my why is. And my why and my personal mission is to shift the thought habits of a million people in my lifetime so they can be the best version of themselves and also have confidence, woo, winning others over and influence at the same time. But the big question you might be asking right now is what is different about thought habits and what's different about this thing called habit finder I've been talking about? So as I said earlier, most programs focus on the outer world. They focus on just go out and do more and you'll have more success that way. But what this program does is a little bit different is it focuses on something that I call the inner world instead. And as a matter of fact, an example, I talked to someone on the phone today and he said, I just want to be a, I want to be a better speaker. 
I want to get paid. You know, he said some really big numbers. I want to get paid big bucks. I want to get on stages. I want to do this. And I see this person doing that. And I see this person doing that. In the past, I did that. And everything this man talked to me about for 20 minutes was all about everything out here. And at the end of that conversation, I asked him, I said, have you ever thought about your inner confidence and what you think about yourself? And there was a big pause because he did say, you know, he shared some personal things with me, but he said, yeah, you know, I do compare myself to other people and it's, um, it's a habit I've always had. And he started talking about some reasons behind that. But back to what I was just saying is that What's different here is that working with a coach and someone that's certified in habits can be different because it's based on principles. It's based on a famous book. It's not something that was just created as a, a, you know, fly by night scheme that was invented overnight. The other thing that I'll talk about is focusing on being the best version of ourself. It is also a focus in six key areas. It's not just one area. It's not 20 areas, but it's six areas. And then in addition to that, you're guaranteed to have a breakthrough and transformational experience where science of the habit finder assessment and the philosophy of the 10 scrolls are combined to give you the best outcomes that you're looking for. And the last thing I'll say about what's different about this is that it's not a one size fits all. Some people sign up for programs to be a better speaker. Some people go to programs to learn how to sell real estate. But the thing that's really cool about this is that it's whatever you want it to be. It's, I want to sell more. I want to have better relationships. I want to stop being burned out. I want to fulfill that dream of being a speaker or trainer. I talked to someone yesterday that said that to me. I want to get out of the sales job. You know, the list goes on and on. So everybody that I've worked with, it's been a part of this group, has had a different outcome. There are similarities, but as I said, we work with you first to find out really what you're looking for and what you want to see different as a result of this program of being in it, I should say. The other common myth that people often say when they want to make changes is this. Number one, I don't have the time or I don't have the money. Or people will say things like, I've tried everything and nothing seems to work. Sometimes people will say, I've even been to therapy and that hasn't worked. Or maybe I'm taking something for my depression because I just can't seem to get myself out of bed in the morning. So there is some truth to these these things I'm sharing right now. But the thing that I'll share that really stands out the most is there is a better way. There's a new way that you can also go through and have a breakthrough and get over to being the best version of yourself. So there are some steps to rebuilding your resilience and also experiencing success habits. And that's a lot of what I know you all came to hear about tonight. So I'm going to be talking now more in detail about what some of these habits are so that you can start applying them in your life. So the first thing that I want to share is, as I reflected on the entire program, on everybody I've worked with on my life lessons around thought habits, I really tried to boil it down into some really small bite-sized nuggets instead of trying to teach you everything that I cover over a weekend or over 14 weeks. I'm going to really just boil it down to what I think are the most important parts of this tonight. So again, if you want to take some notes, please do so, but I'm going to be sharing now what are some of the ways we can rebuild resilience and also get back the success that we are seeking in our life. So the first thing is, the first thing we need to do before we do anything is we need to stop and we need to take a moment and understand what thought habits do I have that are supporting me being my best self? What habits are not supporting me and being my best self? And a little bit later, we'll talk about the habit assessment where you can do that. But I always say awareness is the first step. We've got to know where we are before we know what we need to address or fix or change or shift. The second thing that I think really is a big breakthrough that I've learned through this whole course is that we need to think about and adapt new strategies that are going to shift our thinking. Okay. So there's a lot of examples about this, but I think one example I'll think about is I call it systemic thinking Systemic thinking is when I say something like, 
this politician is awful or these people are bad or that guy I work with is a complete jerk. OK, now I know that we might all like some politicians and people we work with and, you know, everybody in general. OK, that's just normal. We're all going to gravitate towards other people. But what we also sometimes do is we have a wall of resistance in ourselves. And that wall of resistance is almost like wearing a shield around ourselves, and it keeps us from building connections with new people because we've got some beliefs that are black and white and good and bad and right and wrong. So the first thing we also really want to think about is what type of resistance am I carrying around with myself? You know, if somebody is going to meet you for lunch and they don't show up, do you go to, she doesn't like me or they're always late or my God, maybe they got in a car accident. Okay. There's, there's a million things that can happen, but as human beings, we sometimes jump directly to that wall of resistance that it's something about me. And we, as human beings can be naturally, we are victims, right? We all have a, a we all have victim within us and it's not a bad thing, but part of being a victim all the time means that we blame. It also means that we might have that resistance and we might forget to take on accountability. So the third thing that I'd like to share with you is we need to change our subconscious mind. Now, it doesn't mean we need to have brain surgery. Um, it doesn't mean that we need to, um, to go spend time with a monk or, you know, go away to some type of, um, I don't know, like a, a sweat lodge or somewhere that's really, let's just say off the beaten path. But one way we can change our subconscious mind is by what we feed it every day. So the question I would ask you is, what do I feed my mind every day? Do I watch the news all the time? Um, do I look at, you know, social media is everywhere. It can be an addiction, but do I feed my mind in the morning with something that really uplifts me? And I call this, this whole idea, my morning ritual. And again, as I mentioned yesterday, Cheryl's group, you can do something. Um, there's a miracle morning program. You can go online and look it up and it shows you like seven or eight steps you can follow, or you can do a part of that. But Changing our subconscious mind, if you go all the way to people like um, not just Ogmandino, but even Napoleon Hill in the book Think and Grow Rich, this is what they're talking about. They're talking about in order to change your subconscious mind, you need to study uh, this type of information on a daily basis. When I go to the gym almost every morning, I listen to a couple chapters from this book Think and Grow Rich about faith and self-confidence, as a matter of fact. But the question is, is do you feed your mind with something positive? Because that's how you will change your subconscious mind. And the last thing I'd like to remind you all, um, uh, another tip, making two, mil two millimeter steps to achieve our goals. And whether it's, you know, sales, work, relationships, self-confidence and life balance, it's all about two millimeter steps. OK, it's and I think this is another reason why we stay stuck is instead of looking at two millimeter steps, we look at it like pushing a boulder up a mountain. OK, and so I like to share a couple examples of that one two millimeter step. You know, it's tax season and I shared this example yesterday, but I will tell you all, I don't like numbers. I don't like taxes. I don't like getting all that information together. But you know what I do is I set up time and I take a two millimeter step. And today it's like, I'm going to print out the information I need on my computer. Tomorrow, I'm going to get the spreadsheet ready. And the next day, I'm going to make an appointment to go see the CPA and drop all the information off. But the big thing is, is instead of looking at it like I got to spend three days doing this, I break it into two millimeter steps, which makes it less stressful. It makes it easier. And it also gives me more of um, a push and makes it more enjoyable to get started. So when we talk about this next concept, the other thing we wanna think about is that I'm gonna break down some of those areas I just talked about. When we talk about this, we talk about how do we understand, how do we find out if our thoughts are supporting or sabotaging our success? There's really three things to think about here. The first thing to think about is number one, we need to understand how our life experiences can become a backpack of bricks. So I've shared some of my story, you know, divorced, moved, got laid off from a job, you know, and as a matter of fact, I've been divorced twice. And I'm not ashamed to say that because I know what I'm saying right now might, there might be somebody in this room who's gone through that, or it might be somebody that's thinking about going through that. 
But the big thing that we do is we put a backpack on our back and we hold all those life experiences. And this is also what builds up that resistance. We get tight. You know, it's like you go to the chiropractor or, or you get a massage and they're like, my God, when was the last time you got a massage? Because your back, your stress, everything just ends up turning into a knot. So the first thing is if we can understand that these life experiences are gifts and they're not a backpack of brick, that's a huge breakthrough. The next thing we want to do is we want to identify cycles of obligation. Cycles of obligation are the people pleaser. When I say I have to, I should, or I must, that is a sign we might be on that obligation cycle. And if you are um, a people pleaser, and again, I've been there, I've worked very hard not to be a people pleaser, but one of the things people pleasers often do is they make decisions based on if people are going to like them or not like them. This can be a, also an issue on boundaries. So what we want to do instead is we want to make decisions that help us be the best version of ourselves. And then the next thing we want to think about is awareness of replacing expectations with appreciation. I always say that expectations are the biggest killer of joy um, that we ever experience on a daily basis. My life looks like this, but it should look like that instead is an example. So do you do that in your mind? Do you compare yourself to other people? Do you look at life experiences with guilt and shame? I think the last thing we do is we look at the past and we wish things would have been different. We can't change the past or we worry about the future. So these are two big mistakes. Instead of that, it's like, I'm really glad I went through that because something better came out of it. I'm really excited about the future, but all I can control is this moment I'm in right now. So we call this being in the now. And that's um, something that I'm always thinking about and always talking about. So when we talk about adopting new strategies that will shift your thinking, there's really three quick tips to think about here. Number one, what are the biggest two millimeter steps that you can take to make an impact? Number two, can you follow a process that will yield results? And then number three, do you have the support of a coach to guide you? I talk to a lot of people and it's, um, how would I say this? It's really interesting because if, if I am wanting to achieve what I want to achieve in my life, if you look at any sports team that wants to go to the Super Bowl or win the World Series, they don't have one coach. They have a team of coaches around them. But why is it that we as human beings feel like if I ask for help or I hire a coach, I'm weak or there's something wrong with me, or if I go to therapy, and it's really quite the opposite. Um, I've had a coach in my life now for at least the past 15 years, and I just will say that I've never looked back and said that was a waste of my time or my money. I always think more of where would I be and what would I have not done had I not had that person pushing me and holding me accountable. So when we talk about ways to change our subconscious mind, there's a few of them. The first thing we want to do, there's three tips. Number one, change your focus. Do you focus on everything that's wrong? Do you focus on the cup is half full or half empty? Number two, get your joy and your journey back. The best way to do that is what I said a few minutes ago, which is stop looking at the past experience as a backpack of bricks and ask yourself, what is the gift in those experiences? And then the next thing we want to do is we want to focus on how can I accelerate my self-confidence and my personal power? So when we talk about taking these two, two millimeter steps, what it means is that the reason that I keep talking about this, I think I've said it five times tonight already, but there's reasons that we talk about it. The first thing is, is when you take steps like this, number one, it will build your confidence. It will help you feel like you are achieving something. It will help you feel as though you're growing. As Tony Robbins says, we are growing or we are dying. So if you take steps, it will contribute to your power. Number two, if you also focus on two millimeter steps, you're going to see results improve in your life. No matter what that is, whether it's, you know, again, health goals or income goals or career goals, whatever it might be, the best way we're going to get those achieved is by starting with one two millimeter step. And then last but not least, it's a really great tip to take control of your life by mastering your, not just your habits, but your life balance, living in the now, as I already mentioned. 
And the biggest, one of the other big mistakes that we make is this, is when we want to create something new in our life, um, again, here we are, two millimeter steps. If you forget everything tonight, just remember two millimeter steps. But there's other couple of things that we do. Um, we visualize our success, which is a great thing to do. But then the last two bullets are things we do that kill our success. We fantasize. You know, it's going to be great when I get that promotion. I'm going to really make great money and I'm going to be happy. And everybody at my company is going to think I'm wonderful. But we forget to take the two millimeter step. So we just dream about it. The other thing we do is we catastrophize. Well, if I get that promotion, then I'm going to have to work harder. And then everybody might, you know, not like me anymore. And what if I don't get it? Maybe I shouldn't apply because if I don't get that promotion, then I'm going to be really discouraged. and I'm going to feel like a loser. So we either talk ourselves out of taking a step or we just fantasize about taking a step. So these are probably the top two reasons that we get paralyzed and don't take action. It's either, again, fantasy or catastrophe, as I call these. So the next thing I want to talk about is this. I'm making sure I didn't leave anything out here. Okay, I'm just glancing at my notes a second. So the next thing I'll share with all of you is this, is will you be our next success story? And it says mine, but really I work with a team, so it's not just me. So what I'd like to do next is I'd like to share with you some testimonials and case studies of other people who have massively shifted their thought habits. And since I have some people on this call tonight who have gone through my program, I'm also going to ask them to share as well. So the first person that I'm going to share um, is, a, is a case study is Julie. Julie, this is interesting. She is the daughter of somebody I used to work for as the vice president of sales. But Julie is the gal on the right. She's with her sister there on the left. But her big dream, and I'm not going to read the testimonial, but she wanted to go from being a pharmaceutical sales rep to getting into the world of capital equipment. And for anybody that's never done that, it's kind of like going from you know junior high to high school, then going to college. It's a really big career step. And she really lacked the focus and the confidence to do this. So we started working together and we found out really quickly that part of her challenge is she gave up too quickly. She wasn't really taking those two, mil two millimeter steps to make this happen. So anyway, she finally recently got into a role in a medical device company where she is a top sales performer. She's excited. She's happy. I think she's one of those people who's eventually going to be a VP of sales herself. That's She's one of those people that has that, um, that it that we are talking about. The next person I'd like to talk about is Elizabeth. Elizabeth is also a habit finder coach. This crazy story about Elizabeth is we went to high school together. And when I moved back to St. Louis, um, she just said, hey, would you speak to our women's group? And we just had a casual conversation. And that led to her really sharing where she was in a lot of places in her life where she was not happy or fulfilled. So she made some decisions. She left the relationship she was in. Um, she eventually left the company she was working at. She's now a director at a very good, um, very big um food science company here in the St. Louis area. And she's continuing to advance there, but she also made a decision to be a habit finder coach. So she couldn't be with us tonight because she's at a rock concert with her son, but she sends her regards. But these are some of the comments that she, she shared after the program. The next person is Miss Becky. I actually just met Miss Becky for lunch today, but Miss Becky lives out in Wildwood, Missouri. And she had been in San Diego her entire life. Um, she worked as an event planner at the zoo out in San Diego, and she, you know, got really burned out. Um, she had, she released over 120 pounds after she moved back to St. Louis, but psychologically and in the inside of her head, she was lost. She lost her identity. She was in such a place that she didn't know what she wanted to do with herself. She was stuck. So we really worked together and we figured out one of the things she loves to do is she loves to create, she loves to serve people. So I helped her create her brand called Miss Becky's Salsa Shack. So I still believe she has the best salsa and chips in the St. Louis and surrounding areas. But again, um, she really created something out of nothing by just going back to what really makes me happy. What am I joyful about? And it was all about, she used to like to make these gift bags and boxes for people at the holidays. So now she's turned that into her full-time business. And I think she's been in business now for over three years. 
And then the last person that I'll share, um, before I ask a couple other people to share anything they'd want to share that were in the program, um, Anita was also in a really tough place. Um, she had had a lot of health challenges, financial issues, and she was really able to get herself into a place where, again, you know, she moved into a new house, but she really identified that she had a lot of self-destructive patterns they continue to get her into relationships that didn't serve her, um, associating with people that, you know, people that don't lift us up, the, the pig pens, as I call them. But she started finally owning her boundaries and started advancing and having um, much more happiness in her life. Okay. So the next thing I'd like to ask is if there's anybody that's gone through the program. So um, I know Polly, thank you for joining. I know you had some other other plans tonight, but um, or Jane or Alexandra, if you're still on, if there's anything you'd like to share um, about anything you took away from the program. So I, I need to get a slide for all of you as well, but just want to chime, see if anyone wants to give a, a any testimonial or anything that you want to talk about that changed for you. Am I on? Is my yeah? Is I can my, hear. Uh, I can hear you. Oh, you can. Mm -hmm. All right. Pardon me. Maybe I'll I'll put on my video, but I'm going to look like look it's okay from me. Um, <laughs> I am 80 years old. I had an opportunity to start something completely new, and the first thought that came to my mind was, "I'm too old to do this." And besides that, what would I do? I was. I had an opportunity to become a, uh, a, a coach with a, a different type of uh, dimension. And I went through Amy's program and I, I never would have dreamed that at this age, I would be starting a whole new business and, um, and doing something that I absolutely was literally born to do. And uh, it was Amy's program that sort of helped me to realize um, where I was overthinking things and helped me to see that by taking small steps and doing things uh, step by step and having accountability that I could do what I thought was almost impossible. So I now have a whole new business starting up uh, at this age and I'm loving life and so excited. And if it wasn't for Amy, I, I, there's no way I would be doing what I'm doing right now. Thank you, Polly, for the testimonial. And do you want to share our relationship? <laughs> I'm Amy's mom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and, and definitely, I think part of what I saw, what I saw in, in mom and Polly is that I really saw, I just saw her like kick the doors down and just really say that, you know what, my mission is to serve people. My mission is to lift people up. I definitely got the self-development and sales gene from my mom. I, I, I know it for a fact, but the thing that I really saw her do is again, she created something out of nothing. She said, you know, I, this old lady talk is BS. And she basically got certified as a tiny habits coach. And now she has a business out of that. So I really appreciate your enthusiasm and sharing tonight, mom. That was awesome. Thank you. Okay. Would anyone else like to share that has any comments? Yes, I'd love to share Amy. And it, what's wonderful about all of this too, is to understand the foundation of what you have as well. And Polly has been amazing on all of our calls. So I appreciate her speaking up first and foremost to um, Alexandra here. And I think the one thing that really has helped me along the way is to get myself out of my own way and be able to just allow myself to be my true authentic self recently. I think Amy, and I don't know if I've shared that with you yet and all of the years that we've been working together, um, but you know my history, you know my story, and it, it you know, two divorces, yes, and, and of course, some, some rocky roads along the way, um, but one piece of all of this that I realized is allowing yourself to be you and not to allow yourself to listen to those thought habits that are not serving you. Enjoy your morning routine. Uh, make it your miracle morning. And I think you had mentioned the scrolls with Act Now, and we're currently yeah. working on that um, for the month of, of March. 
And it has completely spiraled me into um, creating a whole new market within our organization, which has created a whole new momentum of what we're trying to do within the cannabis space, um, which is an industry untapped with a learning management system. And what's amazing is to, to be able to have your, your entire executive board ready to go, all right, let's go. And Alexandra, you're spearheading the charge. Let's do this. Um, being able to be boots on the ground in Denver, Colorado, being able to do some amazing things. And these have been the most recent in these past couple of months um, has been just absolutely breathtaking. And I couldn't thank you enough, Amy, because I really genuinely feel like there's this coach behind me going, let's go girl, we got this, let's do this. And that is what everyone needs. And like you mentioned, 1 million people shifting their thoughts. I know you've got this in you, Amy. This is awesome. So thank you. Thank you, Alexandra. I appreciate you sharing. And I, just a couple of comments about Alexandra is that I've just seen not only her, um, just her personal power, but her leadership skills just completely accelerate since we started working together. And also, you know, she is building her own coaching business now. We're planting the seeds, we're getting started. But the thing that I really admire so much about you is even outside of the work and what you're doing as a coach and being a, a sales leader at the company and rising to the top, you're an amazing mom and role model. So you just, some of the things and stories you share with me, it's just amazing what you do. And I just really want to tell you that I'm grateful you're a part of the group and I honor you and I'm so glad that, that we're on this path together. Thank you. I appreciate you, Amy. You are welcome. Okay. Anyone else wants to share? If not, we, I think there's one more on the screen, but um, anyone else? Okay. We're watching the clock here. So I will move forward. Okay. Thank you everyone that shared. And then this last testimonial, um, this is somebody I worked with in the medical sales world. And um, she was in a situation where I'm not going to mention the name of the company, but I'll just say that she was not liking the culture. She wasn't treated very well. And she had recently lost her dad. She quit the job with having nothing lined up. And she was in a really, really emotionally distraught place. But basically we worked together and I shared, Hey, there's a new way. And she's created a business. She quit working for somebody else and she created a business called life-saving CPR. And it's really, um, I just got chills saying that because, you know, she wrote me this note again, I'm not going to read it to you, but she wrote me a note when the program was over and just thanked me for what we had accomplished together. But I just want to be upfront that it's not magic fairy dust. It's not me sprinkling somebody. It is it is work. It's work with me and it's work with you, but I don't succeed unless the people I work with succeed. So that is a big part of what I do is ensuring that everybody else is going to have success. Okay. So the next thing I want to talk about is you. What would it be like if you could be the best version of you in 2023? Everything from setting and achieving your goals, having not just relationships, but building new connections. We've been locked in our house for three years have we lost touch with the outside world? And also having the emotional balance and intelligence. Do we have a habit of being hard on ourselves that we need to kick? And do we also avoid taking risks because we're too afraid of what's gonna happen if it doesn't turn out? Do we need to have more work-life balance? And not just that, but do we wanna be more productive and less burned out in the workplace? Do we wanna be better at managing our time and our self-discipline? Well, the news I'd like to share with all of you is that if you said yes to any of these questions I just asked or any of those statements, I want to share with you that I do have an opportunity that I think would be the right decision for you. But again, if you decide it's not the right decision for you, I respect that as well. But one thing I'll share is that one of the ways that I have recently changed my program is that I've moved it into a weekend immersion experience. There's a couple reasons for that. I don't, I think the biggest thing is that when we get away from our iPhone and our house and our family, something happens that doesn't happen anywhere else. We get focused. We also make the connection with ourselves on a deeper level, 
But most importantly, what I've done is not just turn this into a workshop at a hotel. This is actually a retreat. So what I'm doing at this retreat, I'll talk about in just a minute. But for those of you that are in the Midwest or the St. Louis area, the good news is, is you don't have to drive very far because it's out in Wildwood at the Marianist Retreat Center. So I'd like to introduce you to the best version of you, Success Habits Breakthrough Retreat. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it. What is it? Well, number one, it's four days of me time. So the focus is on you. It's not on anybody else. The next thing that I'll share with you is we're going to work before the workshop on setting your goals. And then during the workshop, we're going to talk about how you can help achieve the goals after the workshop is over. We're going to talk about ways that we can have better relationships and be better at connecting and influence others. We're also going to talk about how we can improve our emotional intelligence and balance, how we can improve our self-confidence. And for those of us in the sales world, I call that sales confidence. Last but not least, how can we be more productive and have better work-life balance? We'll be talking about that when we talk about the habit called structure. So every one of these bullet points ties to one of the six habits that you're going to master in the weekend. Now, you're probably wondering, well, what's in it for me? Well, number one, you're going to master the six habits. I know you will experience success. Um, I have other testimonials. Thank God I've never had anybody ask me for their money back or tell me they didn't have a good experience. But the other thing that we're going to do is exactly what you came here for tonight. We are going to get you to the best version of you, not next year, but now. We're also going to have group sessions together. There's also one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. You will get a workbook and support materials. You get a private room, no room sharing, unless you want to. Um, we also have a private shop on site and <laughs> there's more. So there's more surprises that I'm not going to reveal, but um, we will be on, Mer on um, Merrimack River. So there's a lot of hiking and outdoors and beautiful scenery all around us. So you're probably wondering now, what is the cost? How much is it? And what can I do to be there? So if that's a question, I want to share with you, I totaled up what the value is based on the venue we're going to be at, based on all the materials, and also based on what most other coaches I work with in industry are charging. So what you get, again, is you get an orientation and goal setting call before the workshop starts. We want to know what you are focused on because you have your own journey. Um, this also includes the coaching on site, coaching that will also be from the curriculum. There will be other Habit Finder coaches there. Elizabeth is one of them. Of course, Alexander on this call tonight. You'll also set up a 90-day success plan when you are finishing the weekend. And then we'll have a post-retreat call. You also get four books that are pictured here. Of course, one of them will be the greatest salesman in the world that I already talked about. Now, the investment, what I typically would ask for for this workshop is $2,497. And that includes everything I just talked about, the weekend, the books, the materials, the coaching, the pre-care, the aftercare. All of that would typically be $24.97. But what I'm doing right now, because it is spring break week, even though it doesn't really feel like it in St. Louis, is I'm going to be offering now through Friday a spring forward, fast forward today special. And that means that during this week through Friday, I'm going to be taking $500 off of the tuition and offering it for $19.97. So the thing that I'll share with you, um, another point is that there are installment options available. If you're someone that's interested and you uh, wanted to come, but maybe 1997 is out of your budget right now, we can work out a, a two or three payment plan option. Two payments is 1033 and three payments is 689. And the bigger question you might be wondering was, if I'm interested, how can I register? So here's how you can register. Um, you can either scan the code that is on the screen right now. It is tested. Or you can also go to, there is a website we have set up where you can get more information and you click on the link that says register for the retreat. It'll ask you for your name, your information. And then there's a secure payment link if you're interested in registering. Okay. And we will be sending this out after the call or you can take a screenshot or a picture but I just want to invite all of you to, um, if it's time or money, or if there's something else that's keeping you from being there, maybe you ask yourself, is that another thought habit I have? Because in the past, 
I also had those thought habits. But what I will share with you is this, is that if you make the decision to be there, I promise you, you will not regret it. And I, again, said I can share more um, references or testimonials um, if you would be interested in that. But the two gifts I want to give you all for being here tonight are number one, if you have not taken the Habit Finder assessment, or if it's been six months since you took it, please take the assessment. It's free, it's online, and no matter what, it can give you more perspective into where you stand right now. What thoughts are supporting your success? What thought habits are sabotaging your success is what this is going to reveal. And the other thing I'll share as a gift is I will also give you my time. So anybody that wants to set up some time with me to go through your report, that's also a bonus that I'm offering. There's no charge for that. And or if you have questions and you want to talk about something I said tonight, or maybe there's a something you're dealing with in your life that you prefer not to talk about on this call, please set up a call with me. And I promise you, um, we will talk about whatever you want to talk about and whatever is on your mind. Okay. So I think that is probably the end. I think that's the last. These are my favorite two questions. If you're still thinking about it, just ask yourself, if nothing changes, where will I be one year from right now? And also, if not now, when? So I ask myself this question a lot when I'm going to make big decisions. But one thing that I'll share with you is that making an investment in yourself is the best investment you'll ever make. And I say that, but I actually got that from both Tony Robbins and Bob Proctor. They both said the same thing. But with that being said, I'm now going to go to the final slide. Um, this is my contact information. I think everybody on this call has my contact information, but if you don't, it's right here. But I'm now gonna pause and close my mouth and ask if there's any questions or comments or anything anybody wants to ask before we um, wrap up tonight. Going once, going twice, I'll stop sharing and I'll blow it up. Okay. Any questions or comments? Any ahas? Thank you, Joni, I just saw your comment. Okay, see if there's anything else there. Thank you, Joni. And then I saw Alexander put in more time with family. New career to start your life balance. Love it. Start a new career. Okay, I'm just looking through all the notes here. All right. Okay, well, does anyone else have anything? And I just saw Alexandra put a note in here. I'm so excited for the retreat. So am I, I'm ready. I'm ready to um, go back to nature and reset. It's been a really great um, 2023 so far, but um, just like every everyone else, I recommend that we do take that time out. And that's something that I am making a habit in my life. That's something I did not used to do in the past, but now it is part of, of what I do. So, okay, just seeing if there's anything else. And Polly, looking forward to the retreat too. Awesome. Yeah, I'm excited that you're going to be there. Michelle is going to be there. So, yay, Michelle. All right, awesome. And well, I may we... put a little plug in for the retreat, if you don't mind, sure. Amy. Um, Please I do. Mean, it really helps you to just unwind, reset, level set, renew. And it really gives you an, another level of just experience within and focus. So as much as you had mentioned, you know, you want to, to literally stop, right? It allows you to literally reset all of your just inner self and drive. So for example, I feel like work kind of keeps you going, 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 like you mentioned on one of the slides. And this mindfulness, this um, relaxation, we did uh, quite a few yoga events in the morning. We were able to do a little bit of um, meditation as well. And I think that all of that gave me a whole nother level of peace that was truly needed at that time. And I'm just really excited to, to reset again. And it really is a true, all inclusive, holistic retreat that, I mean, anybody could really enjoy that. So thank you, Amy. I'm excited to, to get back on board and I'm excited to say hi to everybody. I mean, coming from Michigan, it is 
Okay. If you're right there in St. Louis, you've already got that a piece of the pie um, going for you. So I'm excited. Thank you. I'm so excited you're going to be there too. So glad you're going to be a part of it and bringing your positive energy and leadership like you always do is going to be amazing. Well, thank you. I'm just excited, definitely. And Michelle, I'm excited to see you again and Polly and, and Amy. And I hope to meet some of the new um, individuals that are on the call today too. Love it. Okay, anyone else have any comments or questions before we wrap up our call tonight? Mm. Oh, thank you, Jane. Great presentation, always inspirational. Thank you, and thanks for joining. I know you've got a busy week this week too. Oh, I have something I can add. Okay. Um, I think one of the neatest benefits of this retreat is that you end up with your own tribe of, of people who support you and who understand you and that you can share anything with and that you know no matter what, they will, they'll always be there for you. Wow. Yeah, I agree. I think that's part of what, I, one thing I really didn't talk about tonight and I love that point that Polly just made because I felt like at one point in my life, my whole life was just my job. It was my job and it was my husband. And, you know, as I mentioned, my marriage was, I mean, it, you know, it was just like that, that last six years were really not as fun and fulfilling. And I really feel like when I got into this program, one of the first things I started rebuilding in my life was connecting with other women. I felt like that was, you know, friendship and social life and all that. I honestly, I just got in my whole life. There really wasn't much of that. And I think what this program has done and the retreat, especially is it's helped me create some really deep connections and deep relationships with people. It's really got me to renew and to remind myself that the, one of the biggest and best gifts in life is relationships <clears throat> and having friends and connections and people you can share everything with and not worrying about judgment or what they're going to say or think about what I say. So I 100% agree. Thank you for that comment. You know, to piggyback on that too, Amy, is I think, uh, especially the last retreat, there were people from many different parts of life and jobs and ages. And it was very cool that um, it's not like just only for salespeople or just a certain age. And, um, you know, it was really neat to see that um, there's a variety of people and ages and backgrounds and all of that and life experiences. And, um, you know, we had somebody, I don't remember how old Carolyn is, young 20s, all the way up to your mom. And you know, it was just really cool. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. And that's one of the things I really do love about it is it's people from different walks of life, different careers, different professions, different levels and, and so many different ways and different backgrounds. And I think it just really creates a great diverse place. Um, for whatever reason it is, we always have women. It just seems like the women come in flocks and groves, but um, we will have a man joining us at this next retreat. Um, his name is Josh. I'm looking forward to seeing him. But, um, but yeah, it's just, it's a really great, great diverse group of people. It's, it's not just, as we say, salespeople, even though, um, you know, a lot of the, the principles of Augmentino, you know, he was in sales. And I think that's why he wrote that salesman in the world book, because he was actually in insurance sales. So, um, but thank you, Michelle. I appreciate your comments there. And I didn't share, you know, just one last thing I'll say about his story. If you haven't read his personal story, um, it's, it's, talk about getting stuck. Well, he was an alcoholic. He lived in Detroit and um, he was really, um, he was married, had a family, lost his family, lost everybody, and then um, lost his job. And he said he had last, the last $30 he had in his wallet, he went to a pawn shop and was about to buy a gun and end his life. And he said he walked up to that door handle and he said he put his hand down and he turned and he walked away and made another decision. And then he decided to get his life on track, quit drinking, um, ended up getting married again. And then he built a huge career in career in um, insurance sales. So a lot of his books are motivational in nature and leadership in nature, but he's got his own story. You know, he didn't just wake up some success story either. He's got his whole story and that's what inspired him to write these scrolls. So again, if you do anything tonight, if, you know, whether you decide to take the habit finder or come to the retreat in a minimum, I always recommend people read this book 
because it's the scrolls are amazing. I mean, they're, I think they're life-changing. And again, I listen to one every day. So that's my story. Okay. Anyone else want to share anything? I know we're, um, I know it's, um, it's 25 till the top of the next hour. So I want to respect everybody's time, but also just want to make sure that if there's anyone else who wants to share or comment that, um, that you can speak up before we wrap it up. Looking at the notes. Okay. Well, going once, going twice. Okay. Well, thank you ladies for joining us. I know a couple of people had to drop off, but I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Look forward to staying in touch with all of you. Look forward to seeing you at the retreat. And I hope you all have a great and a wonderful rest of the week. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.